Today, I'm going to show you how to create a retro inspired illustration using the risograph brush set for Photoshop from Retro Supply Company. You're going to learn how to create an illustration that looks like it was printed on paper in solid ink colors using older printing technologies like silkscreen, letterpress, and of course, risograph. The trick here is that while I'm using these risograph brushes, the effect that I'm going for will be a lot more like letterpress. But other than the style and colors that I'm choosing to work in and use here, the concept of working in simple solid colors and getting that nice printed paper texture is the same. Hello, my name is Mr. Tom Froze. I'm an award-winning illustrator, top teacher on Skillshare and host of the Thoughts on Illustration podcast. If you enjoy this video, I have a whole bunch of classes for illustrators on Skillshare. Please visit tomfroze.com teaching to learn more. In this video, I'll be using Photoshop and of course I'll be using the risograph brush set for Photoshop from Retro Supply Company. If you're using Fresco, which is also an Adobe product, you can use any Photoshop brush in that app and that includes the ones that I'm using today. These risograph brushes are also available in Procreate, Affinity and Clip Studio Paint. I'll also be using one extra brush called Brush Beauty, which is from Kyle T. Webster's Mega Pack brush set, which is available for free if you're an Adobe CC subscriber. I'll also be using AstroPad Studio, and this just lets me use my iPad Pro and my Apple Pencil as a graphics tablet for my Mac. Now this video is completely unsponsored. I'm making this on my own dime. So if you'd like to say thanks for this free tutorial, all I ask is that if you wanna purchase the brushes or a subscription to AstroPad Studio, please use the affiliate links in the video description. So the illustration I'll be making is inspired by Little Red Riding Hood. I wanted to make a scene of a forest at nighttime with Little Red Riding Hood alone in the dark under a moonlit sky. In this video, I'll be starting with a finished sketch so we can get right to building the illustration in Photoshop. I'll show you how I use just three colors on three layers to create a stunning, authentic looking retro illustration. The secret to the style is in using solid colors and simulated overprints, which is a printing technique of printing one ink directly over another to combine them into a darker color. So in the sketch, I worked out my basic composition based on a simple story idea. Uh, Little Red Riding Hood is in the forest alone at night. It's a bit scary and mysterious, so I'm not totally sure of what happened before after the scene. We can leave that up to your imagination. Now, even though there are four figures here, my concept is a sort of time-lapse where we see the character mysteriously moving through the woods. These are each like a little frame in an animation. You can think of it like that. So as you can see, you don't really need much to create a powerful image. I've mapped out a simple composition here with just four distinct elements. We have the trees, the sky, the moon, and of course, my character. So here in the sketch, I've placed four or five simplified trees that extend vertically. And as you can see, the branches also sort of point up in this vertical motion as well. So I've created a rhythm by separating the trees relatively evenly, but I've offset this rhythm and made it more dynamic by varying their angles a bit. And by angling the trees in this way, it also creates a little bit of an unstable feeling, which adds to the kind of creepy or scary feeling, the way that this character might feel as she's walking alone in the woods. So I've echoed this rhythm with the characters as well. And I've echoed the verticality of these trees with the zipper line of the figure's jacket. So we have the trees all going up and down and we have the zippers going all up and down and the figure itself is more or less going up and down. And this is all creating a sense of unity in the composition. So you're gonna notice that the figures take up the lower third of the scene, which is using the rule of thirds. And by leaving the sky and the trees empty in the top, in the top two thirds here, 
This makes our character feel smaller and it adds to that scary, mysterious vibe. Finally, where to place the moon is really a matter of preference and of course, it depends on what story I want to tell. I have two versions shown here in my sketch, one that's kind of big and centered and one that's kind of smaller and just above one of the figures. And I actually ran a poll on Instagram about where people thought it should go and most people voted on the version where I had the moon big and centered in this way. So that's the one I'm going to go with in today's tutorial. So in this one, the moon is very large and it frames the figure. And many voters said they liked this one because it was the most striking and magical. I could just as well have gone with the one where the moon is smaller and that would have made the overall image darker and even more mysterious. But I really like how this one turned out. And my point here is that there often is no one right composition. It really depends on the mood you're going for or the story that you're trying to tell. Now, just a quick note before we move on, if you want to go deeper in how I think about composition, I have a class called Composition for Illustrators on Skillshare. You can learn more about how I think about some of the principles that I'm using in this video, like the rule of thirds, repetition, and variation. I also go through my entire sketching process from thumbnails all the way to finished illustration. These are some of the steps that I'm skipping for the sake of brevity in today's video. All right, so let's turn this into a final illustration. So starting with how I set up my Photoshop file, I will just call up the image size properties here. You can see that I made this 3000 by 3000 pixels. And if this were to be printed at 300 DPI, this would end up being 10 by 10 inches. So as you can see, I have my sketch already placed in my file and I'm gonna illustrate over top of this. So what I'll do is I'll take this sketch layer and I'll just set the opacity down to around 20 some odd percent. And I'm gonna create a layer group on top of it. And I'm gonna call that art. This is where I'm gonna put all my illustration layers. I'm gonna set the blending mode of that layer group to multiply. And that will allow me to see the sketch through any artwork that I'll be creating within it. So now I'm gonna set up my three color layers, one for each of the colors that I'll be working in. And this is very unique to this particular process that I'll be showing you. So right away, I'll just name these red, blue, actually I'm gonna make this one black, and then I'll make this one blue. Of course, white will be in this image as well, but white's not a color, it's just the paper or the page color that shows through where no ink goes. Now I'm gonna set the blending mode of each layer to multiply and this is going to make it so that the colors are all see-through to one another and this is how we get that over printing effect that I mentioned and you'll see what I mean as we go along. So for each layer I'm gonna go into the layer style properties and I got here just by double clicking this layer here and I want to create a color overlay for this layer and because this is the red layer I'm going to choose a juicy red color and while I'm here I'm going to go to the blending options and check this little box down here in the adva advanced blending options that says blend interior effects as a group and that's because if I don't do this the multiply effect of this layer that I want to use for the overprinting effect won't work. So I can just copy these effects to each of my other layers and then just edit them to make them specific to each color. This one's the black layer. Now I'm calling this black in this video but it's actually kind of a really dark navy blue. I like to use really dark colors instead of black because it makes the images a lot more rich. Don't forget to select blend interior effects as group to make sure that the multiply effect takes effect. And then of course for the blue layer, I want this nice royal blue that's gonna be the night sky. And again, we wanna make sure that we blend interior effects as a group. And when we set that option, we get this little icon beside the FX in the right of each layer, just to show that an advanced layer effect has been applied. 
If you want to use the exact colors that I'm using in this demo, I'll place the color codes in the video description. Now we're all set to start illustrating. I just want to show you before I get going that it doesn't matter what color you have selected in your swatches. Because we set the colors for each layer directly on the layer, that's going to determine our color. So I could use even white from my swatches here and then it still paints on in the color of the respective layer. So now I'm gonna start drawing in all the shapes. I'm gonna start with the background just by filling it in with the paint bucket. So we'll go to blue, this is our sky blue. Again, it doesn't matter what color we choose in our swatches, I'll just go with this dark color and stick with it the whole time. I'm gonna skip the moon for now. Next, I'm gonna add the trees. I'm gonna do this on the black layer and I'm gonna draw them on thick using the brush beauty brush that comes in Kyle's Mega Pack. And I'm gonna set the pixel size to 300 pixels just so I have this nice fat brush. And this will allow me to draw these trees on pretty much in one stroke. I wanna make sure that they're not too much thinner at the bottom than at the top, because that's not how trees typically work. And you can see that I'm going very approximately over my sketch. As I'm drawing these in, I'm finding that maybe I wanna move them just a little bit from where I placed them in the original sketch. Now I'm gonna use the same brush, but now I'm gonna set it down to a smaller size, maybe 100 pixels and I'll draw in the branches using this size. Paying attention to the fact that I did move these trees a little bit. The nice thing about branches is they are kind of random, so you can be a bit random as you draw them in. The nice thing about being an illustrator though is that you get to control where some of those branches go so they work for your particular composition. Now, if you look at these ends here, they look a little bit rough. And what I like to do is just clean them up by erasing them back like this. This makes them look a little just more intentional. And the way I'm doing this is I'm using the same brush, but I'm holding down the tilde key on my keyboard. And this changes the brush mode from normal or painting mode to clear or erase mode. So basically if the brush mode is set to clear, it basically turns any brush into an eraser. So the secret to getting the sort of cut out edge effect is simply to double fill in my shape. So I'll just zoom in here so you can see what, what's happening here. I'm gonna select my paint bucket by pressing G and just tap that. And as you can see, just by adding a fill to these shapes, it automatically gives the edges this rough quality. There are a little bit of loose accidental artifacts here that I'll clean up, but otherwise I really like the overall rough edge that this gives. I like this look because it looks more authentically like it was made using physical media because there's all these accidents. I just want to clean up the most distracting bits, but leave most of those rough edges in. So now I'm gonna add the figure in red. So I'm gonna start to see how the colors overlap. Just follow along and you'll see how I actually get this red to pop out and actually look red. So I use the brush beauty brush, same as I did for the trees the trunks and the branches. This one's set to around 100 pixels. I might wanna make it just a tad smaller so I have a little bit more control. So maybe we'll make it 80 pixels. I'll just take that off and try again. And I'm doing that same thing where I draw in the shape using Brush Beauty and then I fill it in. Now, because I had to fill the insides of these outlines first, you get this kind of faint ghost line like that. And so I just do the fill a second time and that's when the whole thing gets covered and you also get those nice rough 
edges. Now, as I begin to draw over these trees, I'm losing visibility. I can't really see what I'm doing. So for now, I'm gonna go to my black layer with the trees and I'm gonna scale that back a bit, maybe to 50% opacity, and that will let me really see my red shapes better. So I wanna keep this brush size broad enough and not super fine and detailed. This gives me a more paper cutout feeling than something that's hand-drawn or painted. That's part of the charm of this particular style that I'm going for. So just drawing in the shapes as outlines first and then filling them in once and then filling again to get that rough edge. Now to get the red of the figures to pop, there's a bit of a trick. First, I'm gonna set my brush mode to clear. You can do this temporarily by holding tilde or you can just go up to the mode selector up here in the top left and select clear. And again, this clear mode turns my brush into an eraser. So I'm gonna go to each of the other layers or colors to remove any places where I don't want that overlap in color to occur. So I'm gonna start with the darkest layers, which is the trees. So here I am on the black layer and what I'm gonna do is just basically draw out the shape of my figure here. It's very faint because of how dark the red is. So if you wanna make that easier to see, we can just go to the red layer and make that also 50% for now. And we'll change that back later. I've reselected my black layer and I'm using the brush tool still just to clear out those parts of the trees where they overlap and I would prefer the red of the uh, figure to stand out. Now, as you can see, I'm leaving a little bit of an overlap where the tree color and the red riding hood figure color overlap. In printing terms, this is called trapping, and this is where you let the color of one layer bleed over the other to make sure there's full coverage and no gap where you see the paper or another color that's behind it. For now, anywhere where I see a darker color where the red and the black layers intersect, I'm trying to erase it, but just leave a little bit of that trapping or overlap. If I overcompensate in some areas, that's okay. Some of these accidents add to the quirk and the overall vintage feeling of the illustration. I just don't want too much of it. So once I've cleared away the trees, I'm gonna go onto the blue sky layer and do the same thing. I still have my brush beauty brush in clear mode. Now you start to see that red pop through and the reason it's looking pale is because I have that red layer still set to 50%. So let's go to that red and bring it all the way back to 100% opacity. There's that beautiful juicy red. We're gonna go back to the blue layer and continue to erase this out. Now you could just make a selection from the red shapes, like the red riding hood figure shapes, but then you wouldn't get this nice trapping or overlapping of the edges and you get a perfect shape. And that's just not the effect that I wanna go for. I want these overlapping edges and even a little bit of white showing through just for that extra kind of vintage a look. One way of getting these insides cleared out quicker is just use the selection tool once you've drawn your outline and then you can cut it out using delete or command X. And then go back in with your brush to give it that more rough edge. So 
So I'm gonna go back to the black layer. I can set that back up to 100%, and we're starting to see how the illustration is gonna look in its final form. I wanna add back the black parts that will go over the red here, including the face of the character in each figure, and of course the mittens, and in some cases the boots. So I'm gonna go back to my mode and hit normal, and this puts us back into normal brush mode. We can actually start to draw in anywhere where there is black. And again, anything that's on the black layer is connected as one layer. I'm just kind of moving the whole layer so you can see. This is how layers are set up when you do color separations in any kind of old school printing technique. Forgot to add the rough edge effect by double filling. I'm also going to erase out the whites of the eyes. I can do that on all layers. For now, I'm going to leave the irises. I still have to create the moon, and once I create the moon, I can draw back in the irises. I'm going to go back to the red layer here, and with my brush beauty in erase mode, I'm going to remove the white area here so we get that nice zipper line. And again, I'm subtracting this white by erasing it from the red layer. And if I want to get that rough edge, I have to do a fill in the surrounding red layer, which will create that texture that kind of encroaches in on that white gap that I just made. It looks like I forgot a mitt too, so I'm gonna select my black layer and draw that in. And then I forgot the face here. Now my final two steps are to add the irises of the eyes and to add or erase out, more technically speaking, the moon. So I'm gonna start with the moon and I'm gonna do a bit of a cheat here. I'm gonna go above the blue layer and actually create an extra layer above it. This is a new layer and I'm going to draw in my moon using a nice big fat brush beauty brush. I'm gonna set it at 200 pixels, make sure the mode is in normal and I'm going to have to select white as my color because this layer doesn't have one of those color overlays set. And I'm just going to draw it in over top that layer. I'm going to use my grid here just to make sure that I can draw a pretty even circle because I see and draw in a diagonal way for some reason. I want to make sure that I don't do that in my illustration. So what I'm doing is um, drawing in my moon just in this square here to make it more or less an even circle, even though it has rough edges. And what I can do is just expand that to the size that I want in my sketch. And I think I wanna have it not like super huge, just kind of about there. And this is why drawing the moon over on its own layer at first is a good idea because it gives me a bit of room to play with and make changes if I want. Now that edge is super rough. I'm going to clean that up a bit. It's extra rough because I created it at a small size first and then I scaled it up. Basically by doing that double fill technique that gives you this rough edge, anywhere where there's a little artifact or a little bump, double filling will exaggerate wherever those bumps are. And so that may work to your advantage or it just may look kind of distracting. And just because of how I made this moon smaller and scaled it up, it scaled up all those little defects, which exaggerated all these little quirks here a little bit too much for my liking. So I'm just going in and manually adjusting those things a bit so they don't look so accidental in the wrong sort of way. 
So technically I want this moon to be knocked out or erased out from my blue layer. Since if I were printing this, that's what the blue layer would look like. It would just be a white circle surrounded by this blue background. I'll just show you by turning off the layers. This is what I want my layer to look like. And of course it will also have the parts where I subtracted out my figure as well. So I could leave the moon on its own layer like this if I want to keep my options open and try different positions and sizes in the composition. But I'm going to be a purist and go back to just the three original layers, red, blue, and black. To do this, I'm going to go to the layers panel here and I'm going to hold down command while clicking the little thumbnail in the moon layer. And this makes a selection from the shape on this layer. Next, I'm gonna hide that layer and I'm gonna go to the blue layer. And then I'm gonna hit Command X on my keyboard, which effectively erases out or cuts out the selected area from whatever else is on that layer. So I can dispose of this white layer of the moon and bring back my other layers. And what I need to do now is add in the irises. And the reason I had to wait until now to add in the irises is that I had to make that moon first and that would have erased out any iris that I created before. So with my brush beauty in normal mode, and I'm gonna set this to a smallish size, maybe 50 pixels just for the irises here, making sure I'm on that blue, blue layer do the little draw in and double fill to get that rough edge. So we have the foundational illustration in place. We can hide our sketch layer and see what the illustration itself looks like. And now finally it's time to add the printing texture. And to do this, we're going to use the risograph brush set. So here in my brushes panel, I have already installed the Rhizo set here. And as you can see, there are a few sets. There's Rhizo Dry, Rhizo Wet, and Rhizo Print Defect Brushes. I actually really like the Rhizo Wet Brushes most for what we're doing, so we're gonna work with these ones. As you can see, there are three subsets of brushes here. We have Rhizo Wet Color 1, Rhizo Wet Color 2, and Rhizo Wet Color 3. And then within all these, we have all these variations in terms of percentages from 10, 20, 30, all the way up to 100. Keeping things simple in this project, we're, go we're gonna just use the 100% versions of each color. So again, we're not really using the brushes exactly as they're designed. We're using them more for their textures than anything else. I like doing it this way because I can focus on the composition at first and then later focus on how the printing would look. And this is just like printing in real life. We wouldn't illustrate using the some kind of simulated texture. We make art and then that would get printed and the texture would come from the actual printing process. So here's the trick to adding the textures. Let's start with the blue layer and we'll just use color three for the blue layer. So I'm gonna select Rhizo Wet 100% there from color 03, from the color 03 brush. And as you can see in the mode up at the top left, it's set to multiply. This is just how Re uh, Retro Supply Company has designed the brushes. I'm gonna set that to normal if we don't do this. The way we're gonna be doing what's next won't work. So we're gonna set that to normal. And I'm gonna make this a nice big 500 pixels. Now, before we can actually use this brush, I need to set a layer mask. So I'm gonna select the blue layer. I'm going to hit this little button down at the bottom with the little square and circle. And that adds a layer mask to the entire layer. And with that mask selected, if you hit Command-I, it will 
invert that whole mask, basically erasing or making it look like it's erased everything that you drew in. Now with our risograph brush that we've already set up, we can start filling in or drawing in with that brush and you can see that nice lush printed texture going down. Now the other thing you need to remember is not to lift your stylus or to unclick your mouse button if you're using a mouse. You gotta lay this all down without lifting your stylus starting starting again. If you do that, you get this layering effect happening and it creates kind of an uneven fill. So make sure you do your entire fill without lifting your stylus or releasing your mouse button. So once you've completed your fill, you can move on to the next layer and repeat the steps that we did the last time. So I'm in the black layer here. Since I'm here, I'll just add the layer mask right away. I will invert that by hitting Command I. And then I'm gonna select Rhizo Wet Color 2, 100%. Set the mode to normal. And then I'm gonna make this one a nice big size as well. 500 pixels should do the trick. And again, without lifting my stylus, I'm just gonna draw in that texture. So you might be wondering if you can just add the texture in one go by filling it in with the paint bucket somehow and the answer is no and honestly I don't know why this isn't available as, as an option like paint in or use brush texture as the fill. I don't know why you can't do that. Maybe you can but I've never been able to figure that out. So I draw in my entire texture here by hand. So lastly we'll go to the red layer, add our layer mask, invert it, and then select a different 100% Rhizo Wet color brush here. Set that to normal and set the size nice and big. And again, paint in the texture wherever the red color is. And because the red is only down at the bottom, we don't need to do the whole scene. Now, if you look real close, we'll just zoom right in close here. You can see how the texture itself looks like first of all just appreciate that nice printed texture it's so beautiful but you can also see that that texture makes each layer a little bit more see-through and that means we really see the moon kind of shining through the trees and you can see how anywhere where colors overlap that i haven't done any adding or subtracting, they kind of show that overlap. Whether you keep these overlaps or you make it so that they disappear, that's really a matter of preference. I like to leave them in because it really makes it look like it was printed on letterpress. Now you might find that the way the effect goes down in the first pass of um, what we did here in our layer masks, you might find that too light so what you can do is you can actually go to, to each layer mask and then hit command l to get your levels dialog and then you can actually see here i'm doing it in the red how it can kind of just make that texture a little more subtle and the overall shape a little bit more solid and you can do that on each of your layers now i'm going to do it to the trees and you can adjust that to make it look how you'd like by pulling in the sliders a bit. I find some of the subtleties are lost when I do it this way. And finally, I'll go to the blue layer and you gotta make sure your layer mask is selected and not the, the layer with the actual image on it. And this adjusts just how intense the effect is itself. I'm just going to do just a slight levels 
adjustment to make it darker by pulling in the right slider in a little bit on each layer or each layer mask to be clear. And this just strengthens the colors without losing the overall effect. So one thing that threw off my followers on Instagram is that you can see the entire moon shining through the trees, like I said. And of course in real life or in a realistic painting, this wouldn't happen. I like this because it makes it feel more vintage and quirky and it's happening because of the multiply or overprint effect we're using. Also the texture that we're using here makes each color a little less solid and that makes them even more see-through to one another. But if you don't like this effect, you can either make the trees the same darker color by adding back blue where the trees are, or you can make them all together lighter by removing blue wherever the trees overlap outside the moon area. So let me show you what I mean. So let's just say we don't want this lighter area where the moon is, and we just want that tree to be really dark. What we can do is use the trees layer, and, and we're just gonna hold down command on our keyboard and click the thumbnail in the layers panel for this particular layer. That creates a selection from the entire black layer there. I'm gonna go to the moon layer, or sorry, the background layer where the blue is. And what I wanna do is fill that blue back in. So again, this color has a color overlay on it. I can fill it in with the paint bucket in any color. And that effectively adds in blue wherever that selection was. And I'll just hide the other layers here for a second so you can see that blue layer alone. So I've basically subtracted anywhere where the trees were. And so when the trees overlay that moon, you don't get that kind of ghost moon behind the trees effect anymore. The other option, of course, and I'll just undo back here, is to make all the trees a little bit of that lighter color. And the way you would do that is, we'll do the same thing, hold Command, and then click the trees layer to create a selection from everything on that layer. And now we're gonna go back to the blue layer and instead of filling in with a color, we're gonna delete or cut out anywhere where there's blue behind the tree. So that makes the trees lighter and also removes anywhere the moon was kind of showing through. And again, I'll hide the other two colors or layers so you can see what that blue layer now looks like. Personally, I think this is a waste of the letterpress effect. The whole joy of working in letterpress is that you get those color overlays, which to me makes an image more interesting. If anything, I didn't mind the version where the trees were darker. This one I didn't mind. Now another way of going about this is rather than doing the selection shortcut, I could just go into the blue layer and use my brush. Gotta make sure that my brush beauty brush is selected here. And I could just manu manually fill in the blue wherever those trees are. And this would give me more control, but of course it's also going to be more tedious and I might do things like this where I erase out the eyes that I'd created before. Now I prefer this way where you kind of see the moon behind the trees. I don't find it distracting, I find it interesting. But what do you think? Do you prefer the overlapping moon effect or do you prefer a more clean look with all the trees just one color? Let me know in the comments. Now at this point you can add in any finishing touches. I like to add in my signature so I'm going to do a little bit of a cheat. I'm going to create a layer where I'm gonna use white, I'm gonna use my brush beauty brush, and I'll just find a nice little convenient spot to add my little signature. And other than that, we're done. 
So in this video, I showed you how I create retro inspired printing effects in my illustrations using Retro Supply Company's Risograph Brush and Texture Kit, plus a few of my other tricks in Photoshop. So if you created something in this tutorial, I'd love to see it. You can share it on Instagram and tag me at Mr. Tom Froze in the caption. Either way, I really hope you learned a lot. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know with a big like and a comment on how this tutorial helped you today. Again, affiliate links to the tools I used in this video are in the video description. Please use these as a way to say thanks and to support the channel. My name is Mr. Tom Froze. You can find my work, classes, and the Thoughts on Illustration podcast at my website, tomfroze.com.